Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So in today's video we are go going to be looking at local file inclusions and uh, not just any kind of local file inclusion because usually we get them in the form of a, a get parameter to a page, a question mark page equals and then we can supply like dot dot slash dot dot slash a whole bunch of those to escape out of the current directory and into for example uh, etsy passwd to read that file and that's how we usually find local file inclusions but they can happen in way more uh, kind of esoteric ways in, in, in different kind of ways that you maybe wouldn't expect or maybe wouldn't check and that's what's important here and um, to show you this i'm gonna uh, run through a small part of the hack the box book machine where we find a server side xss through that server side xss we can then read local files and then we can escalate that to a remote code execution. And that is what we'll be handling today. So let's get right into it. So what is this box all about? Well, on the one hand, we have this, this library um, that we can access as a user. And uh, this library has different things that we can do. For example, we can view books, we can even make a collection, we can submit books. So, so that's interesting because we submit some data. And then in, in a the beginning part of this box we also gained access to the admin panel of this library and that's what you can see on the right here and as an admin we can um, generate uh, pdfs here and those pdfs will contain uh, the books that are available now what will happen if we will submit our own book and in this case i submitted a book that said that had the title the life of pink draconian by pink draconian uh, i uploaded that and generated the pdf and what you can see is that my name uh, is shown there. So okay, so we have some input that I can type that will end up in a PDF generated by uh, the server here. Now what if we try to inject some HTML? So if my book title would be uh, h1, opening h1 tag, uh, something, closing h1 tag, will that be shown, um, will that be parsed, that HTML be parsed and shown in the end result? And if we generate that PDF, we will see that yes indeed, that happens what we just did is an html injection we supplied input that was parsed as html by the server now what if we supply a script tag when that will get parsed what is between the tag will get run as javascript if that works then we have xss on the server now xss on the server means that we can do things on the server we can execute code there and in JavaScript, I think the easiest way to exploit a um, server site XSS is through local file inclusion. So what we'll be doing is we'll be making an HTTP request. Uh, as you can see here, our X variable is a new HTTP request object and we'll set the unload to a function. Now, what is this unload? This unload defines uh, or the function that we set there will be run whenever the request is complete. So we send a request when it completes, this will get run and uh, our function says, okay, write to the document, so write to the page, the response text of the request. Okay, now we say x.open, open a get request to, and now we supply an URL. And this is where it gets interesting, because since we are executing this on the server, we can use a file wrapper to actually get a local file, and in this case, we get etsy passwd. We can then say x.send and send that request, uh, and make sure that everything happens. And then hopefully, when we generate this PDF, we can actually see at CPASWD. So I put this all in one line and sent the request. We check the PDF and we notice that yes, that does actually work. And we can see at CPASWD. Now we have local file inclusion. How can we exploit this or how can we escalate this to an RCE? Well, one of the the things that's possible is if we find a user that has a, a private RSA key and then we can actually use that to log into SSH. And in this case, we see in Etsy PassWD there is this user reader. What if this reader user has a .ssh folder or directory with a private key? So that's exactly what we check. We use this exact same payload, but instead of getting Etsy PassWD, we get slash home slash reader slash dot ssh slash id underscore rsa and when we send that request we will notice that that works and we get this user's private key now we can download that uh, put it in a file 
and try to log in to SSH as this user. So that's with the dash i tag. Using this dash i tag, we can actually get into this user and we have now went from uh, a server side XSS to a local file inclusion to a remote code execution. Uh, and so this video was uh, is kind of for me to show um, that local file inclusions don't come in one format. Local file inclusions are everywhere. And, and the whole point of this is if you can read files from the server, then you are most likely going to also get remote code execution or it's going to be very simple or, or relatively simple to get there. So what should you take away from this? Hunt for local file inclusions everywhere, not just in get parameters, not just in post parameters, but everywhere. This video it was also a part of the XSS Threats bug bounty course. If you're interested in more about local file inclusions and in really, I try, I try to cover every single way in my, in my module in his course. If you want to see that, check out the link down below in the description. As always, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, uh, subscribe if you want to see more of me, and I really hope to see you guys for another video. Goodbye.